Hello, I'm Emma Knights. I'm Chief Executive here at the National Governance Association. Uh, thank you so much for joining me uh, for this webinar. And we're going to be talking about something, or at least I'm afraid I'm going to be talking about something that's at the heart of governing well, uh, that partnership that you all have with your senior leaders. I think many of you will um, have been to our webinars before, um, but just in case there are some of you that are new to it, um, our webinars are, I'm afraid, much more like 30-minute lectures. They're not our interactive um, seminars or forums. We do that at, at other NGA events, which are free to our to our members. Uh, but you can, however, submit questions uh, today via the chat function. Uh, it's just I can't engage with it. So I'm going to keep going, but we will um, answer by email questions um, after the, the webinar. Um, you're also going to be sent um, the slides along with links to all the resources that I mentioned, and there's really quite um, uh, a lot. Uh, and you can also see there, I think, um, already the um, uh, PDF of the slides, if that's an easier way for, for you to uh, view them at all. Uh, we do record the webinars, and then, as you probably know, we put them um, up onto our uh, uh, website uh, and please do share them with others. Uh, particularly, I think this one is um, useful for those who are new to school or trust governance. Uh, and this time I put right across my first slide uh, to thank you for what you will do for your pupils and, and their communities, because I always feel terrible if I get to the end um, of one of these sessions and have forget forgotten to say that, because uh, you really aren't uh, all thanked um, enough so it's incredibly important that your organization uh, does does do that because it is um, uh, a real uh, honor to uh, support you so what I am going to try and cover in this half hour is the respective roles of the board and those that you employ to run the trust or the school and what those good working relationships should um, look like, how you go about um, developing a mutual trust and respect, which is, I know, of course, much easier for me to say than it always is to, to do um, in, in practice. Um, and every set of people will have a different dynamic and a different um, uh, experience. Uh, but we really are, aren't we, in the people business. Um, not only are we um, in schools and trusts employing large numbers of people, but, you know, unlike, for example, the corporate sector, um, the, I was about to say product, which is an awful way to uh, describe it, but the outputs and the outcomes are all about pupils, um, about uh, developing uh, young, young people much, much harder um, to, uh, for you all uh, to measure um, those those outputs and outcomes. It's not like counting cans of, of baked beans. So these, uh, the issues of relationships absolutely at the heart of everything that schools and trusts do. And then I shall finish on um, uh, the way in which uh, we can co-construct, terrible word, but quite important because again, the board does that alongside the senior leadership um, develop their, the, the strategy. So just a bit of a warning, because I'm very conscious uh, that we have a lot of uh, active, very experienced um, governors and trustees out there. And if you're already a chair, you probably know everything that I'm going to say uh, today. In fact, you probably could even give um, this, this webinar. So this isn't particularly aimed at you. We do have a chair's handbook. We do have the leading governance development program. Um, so if I start to lose some intention at this point when chairs think, right, I've got a better, a better thing to do, um, then I won't be at all um, offended. But please do uh, pass it on to your newer members of your board. So some of you may have been with us in January when I um, uh, did one of these webinars all about good governance. And I'm not going to, to repeat that. So for those of you that, that weren't there, do please have a look. 
But um, this is one of the graphics that I don't go anywhere without. Well, in fact, I'm not going anywhere very much at the moment, but uh, virtually, uh, of course. But I wanted to start um, with it again, just to really emphasize the fact that governance is a joint enterprise. And those two foundations of good governance, you know, were absolutely put there with a purpose that we found that when there are difficulties perhaps with relationships, um, that reminding everybody concerned that actually uh, we're all in this together, we're all trying to achieve the same thing, we've all agreed on the mission, absolutely committed to the education of our young people, we have a set of agreed, agreed values and from those, from that mission, from those values, um, making sure that the culture and the behaviours flow from that and are in sync with with those so that that is you know it, it's not just there as a sort of a principle to aspire to it is actually a very practical way of when conversations might be going a little a little awry to actually remind people um, of that common uh, common mission it, it really does make people pause and think oh yes um, actually we all want the best uh, for for our pupils and just as now, I always have uh, the good governance uh, graphic to hand. Um, I uh, 10 years ago, this was the equivalent. I never went anywhere without my eight elements of effective governance. But you can see there that one of those eight elements is good relationships based on trust. And we're not the only people, NGA, that have been um, uh, emphasizing the importance of, of relationships to good governance. Um, others do it too, and I thought I'd just point out uh, the uh, references to relationships in two of those key documents, um, uh, competency uh, framework produced by the Department for Education and the uh, Governance Handbook. Do you see right in the middle of that graphic, they have got principles and personal attributes and one of those um, six dimensions is all about pe people. So let's just um, look at the personal attributes that um, they have pulled out. I have to admit, when they were very first published, I was slightly skeptical because we ended up with the seven C's and I thought, hmm, that's a little bit uh, convenient to add an eighth C. Uh, but actually, over time, um, I found they really uh, do uh, do work. I'm not going to read that entire slide out um, to you. Obviously, that it'll be there um, uh, for you when you uh, have the slides yourself. But there's one or two uh, particularly um, uh, that that I like, and I think perhaps we don't um, we don't use enough. Um, curious that idea of of being inquiring, um, and perhaps that appeals to me because I. I am quite a nosy person and curious is a much more polite, polite way of saying that. Uh, but also uh, that the word collaborative, again, really pushing that idea that we are working with our senior leaders and with um, each each other. You know, that's the whole point of boards, isn't it? That it's a collective endeavor and many heads are, are wiser um, than, um, than one. So this is the absolute um, starter document um, for any work that that we do on. Um, oops. I don't know whether you're all seeing that. Oh, there we go. Got rid of it. Um, that we do on um, working with school leaders. And we're really pleased with the fact that we produce um, this document with the um, Association of School and College Leaders, the Institute of Business Leaders and the National Association 
Association of Head Teachers. So it's, and we're really proud of the fact that it's only four sides. We think we did really quite well to, to, to get the basics um, expectations in those four sides. So if you um, aren't aware of that, please do click on that link, have a look, pass it on. Uh, it's particularly valued, I think, in the sector because head teachers know that their organizations also endorsed it. And it's not, you know, NGA telling them what to do but it's jointly um, agreed expectations. So the expectations upon them, I thought I'd very briefly start um, uh, with that, is that the senior leaders should have an understanding of governance. Um, and that's not always the case, particularly when new heads, for example, are um, recruited. Uh, so even though we um, spent quite a lot of time lobbying the department to make sure that governance was included in the head teacher standards and in the national professional qualifications, it's still not always covered um, as well as it could be. So please do check whether the, the senior leaders at your school or trust have actually ever had any CP um, on governance and their role. But there's also a big need for them to actually acknowledge the role of the, the board, that you are the schools or the trusts accountable um, uh, body, and they need to be comfortable um, with, with that. Um, we do talk a lot about accountability, rightly in the school sector. It's incredibly important service that you're all um, governing, uh, but also it's public, public money. We talk about accountability often in terms of Ofsted and in terms of performance tables, but actually you are that very first line of accountability. But I'm not going to now emphasize that um, as much for the rest of, of, of this time, because I think that perhaps sometimes skews the relationship. You know, that second core function absolutely is holding our most senior um, leader uh, to account. But there's so much more um, that to that, the relationship. It's a lot more um, nuanced um, than simply holding someone to account. But a senior leader really does need to be willing to provide the information that you need, or willing to be challenged, and also needs to have the time to devote to developing the professional relationships. That's the two-way, the two-way street. Um, and I think in an awful lot of cases, um, that does work uh, incredibly, uh, incredibly well. But we all know that um, time is and has been uh, really short for school leaders over the last um, year. So there are times I'm sure when they would have wanted to devote more time um, uh, to governance and have found it hard to, to carve it out. I just wanted to flash the uh, educators on board um, uh, slide up there for you. Some of you may not know that a couple of years ago we started a campaign to encourage more educationalists to volunteer and actually what happened is lots and lots of them uh, came out of the shadows and proudly um, um, uh, showed themselves as governors and, and trustees. So it's been really successful um, and I would uh, suggest that it is still um, one of the best ways of middle leaders and future leaders understanding Understanding what governance is, is all about. So, um, if we were being very accountability focused, uh, we might use the phrase, you know, who's the boss? Who's the line manager? Um, and that isn't a very useful, that's quite a provocative um, uh, language to, uh, to use. And yes, the board is the boss. And we don't tend to use the language of line management, but if anybody is the line manager um, of uh, the senior executive leader, it is the chair of the board. But you are also, as a board, the employer. I know community schools aren't legally the employer, but in fact, you carry out all those same functions as though you were. And as employers, you do have a duty of care to your employees. So in some uh, ways, absolutely, you need to think of yourself as the, as the boss, making sure that that um, uh, senior leader um, is uh, able uh, 
um, to carry out the job that you have appointed him or her to do. I have a number of little mantras I use all the time, and one of them is governance is a thinking role, not a doing role. But there are a few really crucial exceptions to that. Um, and obviously, some of those um, are about that um, uh, line management of the executive leader. Firstly, the recruitment um, and then their appraisal and development. And some of you maybe know we're on a real campaign to try and um, turn uh, performance management into a force for good and I know a lot of you are putting that into practice using the appraisal system to build on the strategic priorities of your school or trust um, usually using a panel of, of, of three and we recommend that that should include the chair of the board but it should also include somebody new um, to um, uh, the appraisal and development process from the board so you know if you are newer to governance that doesn't mean that you should never be part of that uh, panel who undertakes um, uh, the appraisal and six months reviews then of course the is the rest of the senior leadership team and if you're in a, a trust you may well call them the um, executive team as board members you do need to know them you need to um, uh, understand their roles but you need to get to know them in a way that doesn't undermine the role of their the senior executive leader who will be their line manager and lastly don't do what you're paying your leaders to do. Um, this used to be a but much bigger issue a few years ago, but actually even today I came across an example uh, where there were governors who were recruiting teachers. You know, you employ leaders to, to do that. And if you're worried they can't do it well, then there's a development need there. You don't step in and do it yourself. I'm just going to flash a couple of resources on the screen um, uh, so that they're there uh, for future reference, but I'm not going to talk about your role in terms of well-being, as important as it is, um, nor in terms of developing um, head, head teachers. Um, and lastly, we have got resources both on our Knowledge Centre, but also on our e-learning, Learning Link, about recruiting a senior executive leader. That recruitment particularly, I think, um, fits uh, with e-learning because you can go on and get that whenever you, you need it. You don't need to do that two years in advance. So just to build on that, you know, governance is about thinking and not doing. Um, it is a leadership role, but then so are school leaders. So sometimes I've I've heard um, you know people trying to um, uh, delegate or, or describe senior leaders as managers, and they're so much more than that. They're also um, leaders, and I think sharing that role uh, leads us to think about that sort of co-creation between boards and executives that together. Um, you can be creative and generate solutions and, and strategies. So at the heart of governance, it's listening, learning, questioning, and then taking, um, taking decisions. But having really um, thought about what it is your senior leaders are, are presenting with you and really uh, gone through it um, and checked that it stands up, that it's substantive, that it really is the way forward. And we do talk a lot about governance being strategic and uh, not operational. However, I sometimes worry that strategic is a word that we throw around a lot. Um, and actually, there's more to governance than being strategic. There's actually the uh, what's called the fiduciary part of the role, the compliance part of the role, ensuring that things are done properly. There's also the making sense of the world, that more creative, more generative mode of governing, which I think we sometimes don't give ourselves enough time to do. The, the scanning the horizon, that being inquisitive, so there's that curiosity um, again. And all of these three things you will do um, with your senior leaders. So what does a good relationship um, uh, look like? 
understanding each other's roles, having high expectations of each other, investing time, I've mentioned before, being professional and accepting that actually in the same way we expect our senior leaders to be professionally developed, similarly the same for the board, um, but also recruitment, ensuring that we're, the way we recruit to the board is professional. Everybody having that same sense of purpose and direction and all of you challenging each other. The more I thought about this subject, the more I realized that we sometimes talk about, you know, the challenge of the leader, but not actually challenge of each other on the board and how we do conduct that, um, that debate. And everybody needs to be welcoming of that. And not just those sitting around the table, but also other voices. Everybody wants to, um, uh, I hope, hear those other voices from outside the boardroom, the parents, the pupils, the staff. And if you're really going to build trust, there has to be an honesty there. Um, uh, no surprises. You want to be sharing your problems. You don't want senior leaders worried about letting you know that there are issues. Um, but actually, once you are in public together, then there's absolute unity. And lastly, that right balance between support and challenge that we've really been talking about so much over the COVID period, because, because of course, absolutely rightly, so many boards moved into uh, more um, uh, uh, support and less challenge. So now is the term for returning to, um, to get that um, uh, right. And I just wanted to remind you um, that actually you're not doing such a uh, a bad job at all. And uh, sometimes we beat ourselves up because governance is tough, it's hard. Uh, but actually research commissioned by the department last year um, uh, showed us that 89% um, of executive leaders agreed that they were adequately supported and 91% uh, felt that they were adequately challenged and scrutinized. So I'm not complacent because that means 10% didn't feel um, that, but actually, the model perhaps isn't as much of a deficit model as others sometimes like to peddle. So you may well have um, uh, seen this graphic before, um, the sort of four quadrants of, of challenge and support. Where do you think your governing board um, uh, sits? You don't uh, want to be in any of those quarters apart from uh, the high support, high challenge, acting as a partner. Um, we're not, we don't tend actually, I probably should remove it from there. This is because we've had this slide for a while, the, the, the critical friend um, uh, 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 phrase, but certainly we're all aiming uh, to be uh, partners, um, sharing everything uh, good, good or bad. So just looking again at those um, uh, eight elements, uh, some of those others are actually about making sure we do the support and, and challenge uh, correctly. But I just wanted to acknowledge, because it, it's so important to making sure um, we're all governing uh, well, is I wanted to acknowledge the role um, that the clerk, the governance professional plays um, in terms of giving advice. Um, certainly there's very much a sort of three-way, a triangulation between uh, the clerk, the senior leaders um, and, and the board. But one of our other uh, eight elements is being committed to asking the challenging question. And I think sometimes even the word challenging makes people think, oh, these have to be terribly clever questions. Often they don't, often they're the real obvious questions, the whys, the hows, what's the evidence, what does this mean for, for staff or for pupils, who have you spoken to? And then um, adding that sort of confidence um, uh, in there to have the courageous conversations. Do try out an argument. If you've got an, an answer uh, from uh, a senior leader. Um, uh, what does that mean? You need to follow that up with a further discussion. It's not question, answer, question, answer, um, is it? You also um, can expect a certain level of information from um, 
head teachers and senior leaders. Um, that dreadful word triangulation, but very important concept. Um, uh, good governance does require you to expect information from other places that might be third parties, or it might be things that you yourself um, see um, or, or hear, uh, either directly because you're visiting schools or you're hearing it from um, stakeholders. So I know many of you um, may well not have been able uh, to visit schools um, uh, for really some, some time, and I'm sure uh, are looking forward to, to doing that. So really the um, head teacher or um, CEO needs to feel confident um, uh, that that's a healthy, important part of governing, of you obtaining information that you will put into the pot when you're having your conversations. So in terms of the actual meetings, um, they're a crucial part of demonstrating actually trust between, between you, uh, respect, um, but also then leading to, to good decision making. So this is for um, uh, really all of you uh, around the board table, not just the chair. Yes, they're in charge of making sure the meeting works well, but all of us in the room um, should be supporting that healthy culture, helping um, the dynamic in, in the meeting. Watch that sort of flow um, or uh, uh, bounce um, of, of the conversation who's talking in meetings is somebody dominating um who's who's not um listening and contributing if you get through the whole meeting and you haven't contributed you need to reflect um on on that you also need to be happy addressing differences of opinion and that's whether it's between board members or with the senior leader and there's a difference between that healthy conflict but stopping at hostility have your discussions made a difference to to pupils do you feel that that meeting has made um, a difference have you achieved something i think both for senior leaders who are so hard pressed for time but also for yourselves donating your time to the schools you really need to to, to reflect um, on, on that. And lastly, if you feel that your meetings aren't as productive as they could be, you know, talk to your chair or your vice chair or your clerk um, about that. Don't, don't feel that you have to go away and, and, and be quiet. But just um, a few tips, some of us like these uh, uh, things to be seen graphically. And I just wanted to sort of emphasize um, the fact that wasn't very clever in not ensuring that I was plugged in. Um, that that actually style, tone, language matter enormously, and 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 it's something that I have to um, remember uh, all of the time myself. I know I'm a an assertive person. I can be quite insistent. I can be very passionate about things, and that can come, sometimes come over um, as being adamant when, in fact, you're not. You're just quite excited about things. Uh, so I think that sort of reflecting all the time on the way in which we question, the way in which we relate to others is incredibly important, um, as is trying to um, marshal uh, your, your arguments uh, well. But at the same time, don't be scared of starting an argument um, uh, or a line of questioning where you don't know where it'll go. You don't have to have a full thought out theory um, before you begin your, your, your challenge or your exploration, perhaps is a better word. And that last point about authority is an interesting one because we've all seen board meetings where actually it may be someone very different from the chair or the, or the school leader who has the authority. Um, they bring authority for different for a different um, reason. We've also seen cases where senior leaders um, are the people uh, that are dominating and that is not a healthy um, uh, relationship. So lastly, and I realize um, I'm slightly um, uh, uh, got to the end of my half an hour, so I shall talk about um, a strategy very speedily. 
Um, and luckily, we have our great guide, again done with Askell and NHT, about being strategic. Uh, this is the first core function of the governing board, um, and yet we don't spend um, a third of our time on that. Um, although perhaps if you started to add up the time you spend monitoring your strategic priorities, it should become the majority of what you do. So this is the term um, when uh, you should be reviewing your strategy. And I hope that most of you will have, some of you may already have, but will have dates in your diary to do this before the end of the term with your senior staff. And that's where I was mentioning that co-construction. The strategy really needs to come from you both. And I think there was a time when we weren't quite so nuanced about this, when everyone said, oh, the strategy is developed by the board. No, it's approved by the board. But if you're employing senior leaders who don't have a strategic thought in the, their heads and aren't bringing you drafts uh, of a strategy, there is something wrong. So that sort of co-construction is very much a, a, joint, um, a joint effort. They, they will um, then, as leadership, um, implement that strategy. And you will spend your, your year or much of your year monitoring that, as will they, and then come back to that point of um, uh, review. And now I brought us back, I hope, to where we started um, in our, um, our good governance uh, graphic with the mission and the culture um, as the foundations of your work together. Uh, because I think most of you may well have heard that famous phrase, a strategy that's at odds with a company's culture is doomed. These two things need to be owned by you both, uh, board and senior leaders, created by you both, um, and then modelled um, by you both. So thank you so much for um, joining me. Uh, as always, you don't get away without me doing a little plug. For, um, some of you will already know that our annual governance survey is out for completion at the moment. Um, it is the only uh, regular survey of governors and trustees. We use it in so many ways and actually so do other organisations. So we really, really do appreciate you taking the time if you have the time to, to complete that. Um, and lastly, um, this is the year uh, of us trying to raise the profile of governance. Well, actually, we, we try to do that year in, year out. But in 2021, um, we're uh, uh, working with, with others uh, to try and um, uh, raise the profile both inside and outside the education sector. And I know some of you have been very actively involved, but if you're not aware of the campaign, please do have a look. So thank you very much for joining me and good luck uh, with everything that you are doing for your schools and trusts. Thank you. <laughs>